Hello, Taurus viewers. I'm going to be looking into your situation today, what your person's feeling, thinking, wanting. Um, probably going to be getting a, you know any info on new love coming in or just where you're at in your healing journey is what I'm guessing the cards are going to want to talk about. Um, you know, the last reading I did, I was getting somebody... I was getting the, the group that I was channeling, you know, in abusive or toxic relationships and letting that go and, and doing a lot of inner work um, to, you know, heal and to manifest true love in your life. And it's, it's difficult sometimes because it's like you have to also be, you have to change those subconscious patterns so you're actually attracted to the right people. And I don't know if you've ever noticed that you'll see these these happy couples and you'll look at you know the man or the woman in the relationship and you'll be like wow I would never be physically attracted to that person but you have to think the person that's in that relationship is physically attracted to them they do that is the energy that they resonate with you know so it's subconscious it's like subconsciously our our childhood patterns these patterns that repeat um affect how we physically see people like we actually physically see people differently um, than others than others do if that makes any sense so yeah last I checked you were you were working on breaking those patterns you know getting out of a toxic relationship healing uh, let's just see what's going on okay that's for the Taurus viewers what is oh, I better hold on okay so for the Taurus viewers, what is what are the updates? What's going on with this situation? What is going on? What do you guys need to know right now that you don't already know? What are the, the energy updates regarding this, this connection? Trapped, High Priestess of Earth, Cycles. You're not trapped anymore. This is past energy, I feel. We have Rigid. We have Honesty. Differences and Vision. Okay. I do see you standing up more and more for yourself. You see this energy here? It's like this... See this crow, this raven, is like looking at her like... Come back. Let me control you again. Let me trap you again. And you're just like, no, you're getting into this high priestess of earth energy. You're you're grounding yourself. Earth to me, it's like it's about grounding. It's about it's about going out and connecting with nature. You might feel it find a lot of healing energy in nature. I think you need that gentle energy right now. Um, connecting to your spirit guides, connecting to to nature, maybe going um I mean, I know we have to socially distance right now, but maybe if there's like woods near your house or there's like some kind of park or something where you can just go for a nature walk, I think that would be really healing for you right now. I also just see the high priestess of earth as, you know, look at her. She's being strong. She's aware of this energy, but she's not letting herself be trapped again, or he's not letting himself be trapped again, whatever, you know. It, it could be male or female. It's however it resonates with you, whatever your situation is. But this person here is not letting themselves be trapped, again, by this toxic person. They're looking for, they're looking away. Um, you know, it's good to shield your energy. It's good, you know, if you're ignoring them and it's hard for you, like they're messaging you and they're trying to pull you back, just stay on top of it. I know it's hard. I know it's painful. Um, but ignore their messages, really. Stay on top of it no matter how hard it is. You know, block their number if you need to, but ignore, do whatever you need to do to ignore the messages. Maybe, you know, again, going out in the woods and healing, going out in nature to the beach, wherever, um, pursuing hobbies, you know, taking um, like an uncrossing healing baths would be good for you too. Just kind of just self, self care, self healing, whatever it is that makes you feel good. You know, self care could be watching TV, it could be, um, you know, watching a movie that you love that makes you feel good. It could be exercising, yoga, whatever it is that just... I feel like with, with this person, you probably lost a lot of yourself. Like, if you pursued art or you pursued certain things, I feel like this person either just blocked you, like, actually intentionally blocked you from doing those things, 
or they just depressed you and like drained you to the to the point where you didn't have the energy to do those things. So when you're ready for it, get back in touch with those things that you used to love that this person took away from you. You know, find those things again. And again, you know, if they're telepathically or physically reaching out, just block your energy. Imagine this bubble around yourself. Just keep blocking their energy out. I know it's difficult. I mean, I've been in abusive relationships. It's been quite a while, but you know, I remember when I left my abusive ex and it was scary and painful at first, you know, it's, it's like we had a very codependent relationship. I was used to having him in there all the time. I was used to, to living with somebody. I was used to having someone to talk to every day. I was used to all of that. And I was surprised though, how quickly I got over it though, because I didn't think that I would. I thought I was always so scared to leave. I was so scared to be alone. And I thought that I would just not get over it. And when I actually finally left him, I was so proud of myself for leaving. And I felt such, I just felt this, like this spiritual energy. And that's kind of the energy I get for you guys coming in. If you, if you really let this go and you, you stay at it, like you continuously let this go, you consciously make that decision to ignore them, to block them, to move on you know, give them closure, give each other closure if need be, you know what I mean? But like, do not see them in person, do not do any of that, like, just keep moving on. Um, you know, I was amazed how quickly I moved on. I didn't, I didn't think that I would. I was always so scared to leave, but when I did, it's just like, this spiritual energy came in. I just felt like, just so proud of myself, and I felt, I felt this sense of freedom. It was like I could go out to the mall or I could go out with my friends or go to a club or go hiking or go do whatever I wanted to do. And I didn't have someone blowing up my phone asking me where I was and who I was with and when I was going to be home. I just, I had this freedom to like do and be whoever I wanted to be. You know, it's like I had this freedom to like say whatever I wanted to say, to do whatever I wanted to do without having to worry about being physically or verbally abused or talked down to it's like I was able to finally find myself and figure out who I am and be that you know what I mean because there was nobody stopping me there was no one no one telling me I couldn't I wasn't allowed to be myself you know and this person didn't allow you to be yourself they didn't allow you to pursue your hobbies so you really you got to find yourself again and you got to put yourself first above all else you have to love yourself more than you love this person you know you and that's it might take time to develop that. It's like you got to, you know, it is a painful process where you're finding yourself again. But, you know, I'm telling you, like, if you, it's it's up and down, I think, sometimes with the, when you when you leave someone like that. But it's like, you're going to have days when you're depressed and you just cry and stay in bed. But then you're also going to have these days where you feel like just, again, just freedom, just happiness that you're, that you can do and say and be whatever you want to be that you know the the world is your oyster now that you're away from this person like whatever career you want whatever hobbies you want to pursue no matter how weird and out there and crazy they are the the world is your oyster to do all those things that you weren't able to do when this person was holding you back um so yeah just just keep just just keep doing what you're doing. I can't reiterate enough. Do not text them. Do not drag them. Because I know they either already are or they're going to, in the near future, try to exploit your empathy again. And they're going to try to say, like, oh, I can't live without you. Or they might claim that they're suicidal. Or they might say, and again, be like, okay, well, I'll give you a hotline number. Or I'll call the police. Or I'll call, I'll call somebody to help you. But that's not for me. Like, I can't. I'm not going to be with you and ruin my life because you're upset. Like, no, not going to happen. But they're going to, yeah, they're going to try to exploit your empathy. They're going to try to say and do all the right things like, oh, I messed up, baby. Please come back. Please come back. And, you know, with this group I channeled, you have to remember the last reading I did, I got that if you get back with this person, you could literally die. And I hate to say that. And that's not for all of you. That's just for some of you, though. But for those that were really physically being abused, I get the sense that, like, if you went back, you, I just sense such, like, just doom, honestly, just doom. I get the sense, like, they might either beat the shit out of you to the point where you end up in the hospital on life support, or you would end up pregnant by them, and you would be stuck, and you would have kids with them, and you couldn't get away from them, and you wouldn't be able to fully get custody because they would manipulate the court system, um... Or there would just be something that would happen where you would, like, be stuck. And that would be your life. That would be, like, the rest of your life. Like, 10, 20, 30 years or more. 
being with this person, being stuck to this, being obligated and stuck to this person. So, I mean, I I know I keep stressing that, but it's like, it's so important because it's like your life depends on it, whether it's like actual physical death or whether it's like the rest of your life is ruined and you end up miserable and you end up trapped with this person, whatever the situation might be, it's, it's bad. It's doom for everyone in this group. It's doom. There's no, if this person was abusive physically, mentally, like it's, it will get worse. They will, again, they're going to try to say and do the right things. They're going to try to make you feel bad for them. They're going to try to promise to change, to go to counseling. And that's, that's what abusers do. You have to realize that it's, it doesn't mean it's genuine. That's just what abusers do. And once they have you back again, once they have you stuck again, they're going to go back to relaxing and abusing you physically and verbally, you know, like women are not rehabilitation centers for damaged men. Like same vice versa. Men are not rehabilitation centers for women either. Uh, you know, whatever the situation might be, like you, you need to, it's hard for empaths sometimes to get out of that beauty and the beast mentality because we typically see someone's core. We see the good in them. We see who they are on a soul level. But sometimes it's like, almost like we fill in the blanks. You know what I mean? Like we're projecting what we want onto them and it's like that's what we think we see isn't even there. Or it's like it is there, but it's like who they were when they were like children and haven't been for years and years. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, you see like that innocence and that purity that they had when they were a kid or a teenager deep, deep down. But that doesn't mean that energy is ever going to come back up. It doesn't mean you're ever going to get to it. You know what I mean? Like who they are on a... That's just such an important lesson for empaths to learn. It's like who they are on a day-to-day level, what they say and do their actions on a day-to-day level, that person is equally, if not more important than who they are deep down. You know what I mean? Like you don't need to dig and dig and dig and try to find that little bit of good in them deep down. Like there are people who just are naturally good, who already have that good. And that's what you want. You know what I mean? You want... Like, I don't encourage empath narcissist relationships. You know what I mean? A lot of people do. A lot of people in the new age community will be like, oh, we need to heal them. Like, no, you don't. Like, they need counseling. They need help. You're, you, like, you have to realize how hard it is for someone to change on their own. But when they don't genuinely even want to change and they're just doing it to get you back, they're never going to change. It's not going to happen. It's just not, you just, you have to be aware. You have to learn that lesson now and be aware of who they are on a day-to-day level and stop seeing who they are at the core, you know, like that little bit of good that you see is not worth it. It's really just not that little bit of good they have buried deep down because again, there's so many people out there who are just good deep down, good on the surface, just good people all over, you know what I mean? And that's the kind of relationships I encourage is empath and empath relationships. Those are the kind of relationships that are healing because it's like you you know, just empath and empath relationships can heal the world is what I feel. It's like, that's just, it's when you're with somebody who's like high vibrational, like you, it's like that energy just like radiates. It just, it resonates. It's just like, it's inspiring. It inspires others to find their true love too. So just keep that in mind. You know, you, you, you gotta, you gotta learn these lessons. You gotta break that beauty and the beast mentality. You gotta remember that, you know, they don't change. They just, they don't. If someone's an abuser, they're an abuser. Like there, there are some men out there who will just never hit women no matter what. And then there are men that will. And once they do, there's no going back from that. That's who they are. So please just continue to shut them out. Continue to protect yourself both physically and also like mentally, emotionally, like doing the energy bubbles to, to shield yourself, visualize, visualizing, shielding, shielding, doing the uncrossing and healing baths, you know, getting about nature, doing what feels good to you. Um, just remember like the, it's, it's, it is up and down for a while. It does hurt sometimes, but you got to just ride through it. You know, you got to ride through it. Your entire life, your entire future depends on that. So anyway, I think that I do think that you're being strong right now. I really do see that energy that you're doing all you can to be strong. Um, what do these cards want to say? Yeah, these cards just popped out. It's like, 
this person has been ignoring your pain and not hearing you for so long. And it's like, yeah, they might come in with a love offer, but you're going to like look at this and you're going to be like, no, this is dead. This is dead. This has been dead for a while. And I will literally be, I could be dead if I get back with this person or my life could be ruined. You're like, you need to, you're looking at this skull and you're like, no, this love offer is not worth my life. It is not, it's just not worth it. It's so not worth it. When you're looking, you know, with the rigid card here, you see this bird that's like looking at the cycles card. It's like, I think you're realizing, well, I think you're learning these lessons. You know, I think that you're, you are learning these lessons. You're learning what you will and will not tolerate. And you got to set stronger boundaries in the next relationship. You got to like, just kind of, you got to break these patterns. Otherwise you're going to end up with the same type of person again and again. So you have to do the work to, to end these patterns. And it's so worth it to have true love, to have somebody that actually loves you and treats you well, somebody that you can be your true self with. That energy is just so pure and so amazing. And it's worth doing the messy inner work to get there. And, you know, like I said, it's going to be a roller coaster for you for a little bit. It's going to be painful at times, but just whatever you do, just don't text them, you know? If you have to stay in bed all day crying, do it. Just don't text. That's all. Just don't reach out. As long as you don't reach out, it's good. You know, do whatever you need to do to heal. Each person's healing process is unique and different. But anyway, this bird, you know, this bird is looking at, see this rigid card. It was like everything was blocked and you're looking at this cycle. You're like, okay, wait, this is, this is why things have been blocked. This is why my life has been blocked. It's this person. It's this energy. I should have listened to the red flags. You know, there are so many things that I let slide and abusers will do that too. They'll try to like, they'll just be manipulative and abusive, but they'll try to do it in such a way that, that it's like, it's subtle, you know what I mean? They'll do it in a subtle way so that if you call them out, they can just tell you you're crazy or tell you you're being dramatic or whatever, you know, it's like, they'll just make little offhand comments, but it's like, you're becoming aware of those. You're like, wait a minute, that wasn't okay. This is a cycle that you're ending now, ending karmic relationships, uh, toxic soul contracts, being honest with yourself, being honest with yourself about what you will and will not tolerate, you know, finding yourself, you're definitely quite a bit further along in your healing process than you were before. Um, and remember healing is messy. Healing isn't all, healing isn't all about positive thinking. Healing is messy. It's crying, it's purging, it's anger. It's, 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 you know, it can be chaotic. It can be a tower moment. And you realize you're being honest with yourself about the differences. Like this, th there's too many differences. Like you don't want this person. This you can't be yourself with this person. You were never able to be yourself with this person. You're being honest with yourself, and you have this new vision. Like you're just this is Aphrodite. You know, you have this new vision where you're like aware. It's like I want somebody I can actually be myself with. I want somebody that won't. You know, just just keep in mind like the freedom, the sense of freedom. Even if it hurts a lot right now, the sense of freedom that you're coming into. Um, the healing that you're coming into, it's worth everything. Put that above everything and everyone else. You know, it's hard for empaths to put themselves first, but you need to put yourself first. There's nothing wrong or selfish with putting yourself first. You should do that. Narcissists put themselves first. Why wouldn't you, you know? I mean, if narcissists are doing it, empaths need to be doing that too. Like, it shouldn't just be narcissists doing that. You know what I mean? Like, you, you got to put yourself first. Um, what are the final messages? I don't know if those were all meant to be. Were those meant to be upside down? No. Okay. Yeah, chaos, just chaotic energy, like coming in and breaking this up. And this it's situation, I think you're also going to realize that this relationship was not as soul-based and deep as you thought it was. It was familiarity. It was lust. It was attraction. It was, you know, it's like if you've been with somebody for a long time, it's hard to let go, but it's like you're, you're starting to realize how surface level this relationship is, like, or was, you know? You're starting to realize, or they could have cheated too. Maybe you're realizing that, like, it was chaotic, like they che you're going to find out they cheated or something, and it's like, well, whatever, fine. Go off with this other person. I don't care anymore. Um... But with the last, I think it's mostly like just saying like you're going to realize it wasn't as deep as you thought it was. It was just this mental pattern that you were repeating. And there's this conclusion, you know, and they might be sending a message, but you're like, no, this is over. This is over. You got to be. It's just a reminder to be strong. Be strong. Um, put yourself first. Let's get some more messages. What's your final advice? What is your final advice?
Yeah, see, that's what I got. Surrender to the beauty of the natural world. Take a relaxing break. Sorry, I don't know if you can see that. Take a relaxing... Oh, here, I'll put the cards right here. Surrender to the beauty of the natural world. Take a relaxing break. Spend time in nature. Replenish yourself by feeling the beauty and the ecstasy that's in nature. Surrender your ego. Cultivate gratitude. Be of service to others and come from your heart. A big ego can work against you, but humility will further your goals. I think, actually, because I've been kind of, I was kind of drawn to talk about this, so I think what it's saying is surrender, so like breaking these mental patterns that you have with relationships. Because people always think like, oh, I followed my heart and I got screwed over. And it's like, you didn't follow your heart though. You thought you were, but you were actually following your mind. You were following your subconscious patterns. You were following these childhood patterns, these mental patterns that you've been repeating with people, with, with whoever you're attracted to, with romantic relationships and probably friendships too. You were repeating these patterns and so those, that wasn't love. That was, that was mental. That was of the mind. You know, these relationships were all of the mind. It was all mental. It was all subconscious body language. It was all just familiarity. It was all lust. You know what I mean? And so you're actually, once you get, once you work through those patterns and really like, do you know, stay on top of it and become more aware of body language and more aware of your patterns, it's like, and you really learn to like, just genuinely like, heal and love yourself um you start being attracted and you set these boundaries too it's like you start being attracted to different kind of people you start actually finding soulmates on twin flames and people that you connect with on a soul level like all the the best relationships i've had have been people where i wasn't completely attracted to them at first i was like a little bit but not too much but then i got to talking to them and got to be friends with them and like we it was like soul recognition. Like I remember my past lives with them or I, I just got to know who they were. Like I got to know their personality. I got to have these long, deep talks with them and then developed a connection and developed romantic feelings from there. You know, if I'm attracted to someone right away, I don't, sometimes I don't trust it. You know what I mean? Like I'm cautious with that. Cause I'm cautious. I, you got to use your, you got to develop your intuition too, so that you can kind of feel their energy, feel how your body tenses up around toxic people or whatever your, however your intuition speaks to you. Sometimes it's through your body. Sometimes it's, it's different. There'll be different hints. So just really develop your intuition and figure out how your intuition speaks to you so that you can be aware when you're meeting new people of if their energy is good or not. And you got to be honest with yourself about the red flags. You really have to be honest with yourself because those red flags are there. People just ignore them. Like, they might be subtle at first, but they're there, and you have to be honest with yourself about them. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's like you weren't following your heart. You were following your mental patterns. If you follow your heart, you're going to be following these, like, soul-based true love relationships where it's like you actually know the person, and they might not be your usual type. It, it's like, but it's like on a soul level, you guys connect. It's not mental. I mean, there might be mental connection there, too, but it's not just mental. Like, it has been with these other people. Surrender comparisons with other people. Keep your eyes trained on yourself. Focus on your own strengths, attractiveness, and power. So again, working on insecurity, working on genuine self-confidence, um, you know, figuring out who you are and being that person no matter what. Not letting anyone stop you from being your true self. Surrender to what is. Flow with what is instead of fighting it. When you can't change a situation, compassionately accepting it exactly as it is will bring you peace. So Again, you're not this person's savior. Like, you can't be. You need to work on saving yourself. You need to focus on yourself. Um, it wasn't, this person wasn't going to change. If you're wondering, like, no, they weren't, they're not going to change. They might try to tell you they are to get you back, but they're not actually ever going to change. And if they did, it would be, like, through years of counseling, and it would be on their own. It wouldn't be with, it wouldn't be with somebody, you know? Surrender to wonder and awe. Open to the magic of every moment and sense the awe and wonder in all of life. This attitude will keep you connected to the ecstasy of flow. So again, you're just going to, if you ride this out and you just stay strong and you shut them out um, and you just purge them, just get, get them out of your life completely, you're going to have this new sense of like awe and wonder and just freedom and just fascination with life again, having all your passions come back up. Surrender negative thinking. You have control over your thoughts. When negative thoughts surface, say thank you for sharing and quickly refocus on positive affirmations. I don't know how much I agree with that one, actually, because I think that it's normal to be... I mean, we're, we're human. We're going to be negative. And I don't 
believe in suppressing your neg your negative side. I don't believe in that. I think that like you're going to have to purge. You're going to cry. You're going to be angry. That's important. You don't want to stuff your your emotions down. You know what I mean? Because they'll come back up in uglier ways. So let yourself purge and heal and cry and feel that anger and all those emotions and just, you know, purge. Just let things flow. Um, and this card could have been telling coming up just to have me talk about that since I didn't mention that earlier in the read. Surrender unhealthy relationships. Let go of relationships that don't serve you, including unavailable or toxic people. You deserve to be treasured by others and to be surrounded by positive, good people. All right. Well, thank you for watching. I hope this resonates with you guys. Uh, please subscribe if it does. And if you want a private reading, my information is below. Thank you.